Riverwalk. This street follows along the mud-slick banks of the Miskahani before bending south, turning into a misty avenue between the trees. Steep stone steps lead down to the water's edge. The town square lies west and a vacant lot lies east. Michael follows you. All right. uh, what we're trying to do is get to our new house. And we have to walk there through this town and I'm lost. So there's, there's your catch up right there. All right, so we've been west, so we're going to go east. All right, vacant lot. Once a building stood here, now there is only cracked pavement and rampant weeds. Breaks in the chain link fence lie east and west. A filthy old mattress lies among the weeds over in one corner of the lot. Michael hurries to catch up. Well, this is pretty gross. And this is where I, rea I really realistically do what this woman would do, which is examine that mattress. The mattress is stained and ragged, oozing stuffing in several places. From the cans and food wrappers scattered around it, it looks as though somebody's been using it as a bed. Oh wow, using a mattress as a bed? Did I mention how sorry I am to hear about the car, says Michael. A sudden gust blows a cold spray of rain into your face. Uh, let's look under the mattress. Always look under things. You find nothing of interest. Okay. Um, I guess we can go east. So then through the fence. I know this is not the way to the house. Wait, says Michael. I think it's the other way. Oh, okay. Well, west then. Back to Riverwalk. So we've been here before. I guess we'll go back to the town square then. Town Square. The claustrophobic streets open out here onto this wide expanse of uneven paved stones in the center of town. The municipal courthouse stands at the south end of the square. Avenues to the west and east lead back into the cramped, ingrown streets, while to the north lies Waitley Bridge. In the center of the square, rising from a circular lawn of unhealthy-looking grass, stands a stone obelisk. Michael strolls along after you. I don't think I examined that obelisk before. I may have, but humor me uh, if I did. The obelisk measures about three feet square at its base, narrowing slightly as it rises a good 15 feet to a blunt tip. It seems to be a monument of some sort, although you can see no plaque or marker anywhere near it. Dense, twisting hieroglyphs cover all four sides. Embedded in the stone high up on one side, very near the top, is an iron ring. Oh, that's foreboding. X ring. A thick hoop of dark crusted metal about four inches across. X. Hieroglyphs. Damn it. Hieroglyphs. The characters twist in disturbing ways, flowing into and through each other and almost seeming to shift and squirm slightly as you try to follow their lines. The effect is deeply unsettling, and you have to suppress an urge to take a step or two back away from the monument. All right, let's look again, find out where we can go. We don't want to go north, we're aiming in a southerly direction. We don't want to go to the courthouse. I guess we head west. Shadowy corner. The buildings on this side of town are taller and thus block more of the sky, making this neighborhood a particularly dark and unpleasant one. The main street leads away to the east and a shadowy driveway leads through a high brick wall to the southwest. Michael follows you. Um, shadow driveway is south west. South. Well, let's try southwest. Ah, the asylum courtyard. This is not where we want to be. This tiny shadowed court is dominated by the grim edifice of Dolmer's Asylum to the west. A driveway to the northeast leads back to the street, and a narrow alley leads to the east. Michael strolls along after you. I'm about to pull out the map. I'll tell you that. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. Give me a second here. Head map. All right, town square. All right, so what we actually wanted to do. Oh, okay, we could head south on Riverwalk. That's what I missed. Okay. So back to Riverwalk. Shadow corner. 
river walk. Where does it say I can go south? It doesn't even say that. Oh. Before bending south, turning into Misty Avenue between the trees. Okay, well, excuse me for missing that. Chili Avenue. It is noticeably cooler along this lonely street at the edge of town, perhaps due to some unwholesome vapor rising from the waters of the nearby Miskahani. Dirt roads lead west and south into the dense woods at the edge of town. A clammy mist hangs in the air, seeping through your clothes and making you shiver. Michael hurries to catch up, but stops when he sees the mist. He stares at it for some time. It's strange, he murmurs. I feel like I've seen this before. He takes a step forward and is soon standing in the midst of the curling vapors. Suddenly, the mist parts before him and dissolves away into nothing. Michael hardly seems surprised at all. Michael heads west, quickening his pace. Oh, so now he's leading me. Okay, so we'll follow Michael. The road climbs sharply, heading up into the hills. Scenic view. Halfway up the hill, a break in the trees reveals a panoramic view of the Miskahani River Valley and the squalid little town of Anchorhead nestled within it. The town is a jumbled sprawl of rooftops spread out below you. You can see the university almost directly to the north and, a bit further out, the smokestacks of the paper mill. The solitary lighthouse and surrounding ocean are visible to the northeast, and to the east you can see the shattered steeple of an old church rising above the treetops. Winding through it all is the thin black ribbon of the Miskahani, and right in the center lies the, uh, the little clearing of Town Square. You can just make out the shape of the obelisk from up here. The road doubles back on itself, east to the southeast, winding its torturous way up the top of the hill. Michael is here. The rain beats down ceaselessly. Michael goes southeast. I guess we're still following him. All right, we got a picture. Let's check it out. Oh, hey, that's a neat picture. I like that one. It's really well done. I like it. Front of the house. I'm glad Michael took over for trying to find this place. Gnarled and ancient trees surround a small clearing at the top of the hill. The road enters the clearing from the northwest and sweeps around in a wide curve, ending in front of the house. At the south end of the clearing stands the Verlac family mansion. Attached to the front door is a typewritten notice. Michael waits impatiently by the front door. Take notice. You pull the notice down and squint, in the squint at it in the gloom. It's a letter from Miss Kahani Regional Utilities Company, explaining that, due to wiring difficulties, the electricity will not be installed until next week. No phone service either. Well, that's wonderful news, remarks Michael dryly, reading over your shoulder. Don't look over my damn shoulder. Open door. You unlock the front door with the key to the house. You open the front door. Michael enters the house. Enter house. You close your umbrella as you step inside. Oh my god, this is a real... This is a real info dump. <coughs> Foyer, a gloomy and forbidding entry hall with tall, narrow doorways leading east, west, and south into pitch black rooms and a steep staircase leading up into the second floor. To the north of the front door stands wide open. To the north, the front door stands wide open. Stacked in a towering heap in the middle of the room are all your luggage and belongings, which you had sent ahead through the moving company before driving up to Massachusetts. How did they get a key? The reality of this move finally slams home as you stare at the jumble of, of stuff, virtually everything you own and care about, boxed away and piled up in the middle of the floor. Michael is here. Night has fallen. A cold, noiseless draft coils through the foyer and up your back. You are momentarily seized with an almost childlike fear, that of being tiny, timid, and alone in a big, dark place. The feeling passes, though not without a shiver. Michael stretches his arms and yawns. Well, he says, I think I'm going to turn in. There'll be plenty of time to unpack and explore tomorrow. Good night, hon. He kisses you on the cheek. Don't stay up too late. Michael goes upstairs. <laughs> 